look at the role that you might play in the election itself and in the result? If, um, and at the moment the polls don't suggest this, but we, we don't always trust the polls, if it's a Labour uh, minority government, a, a hung parliament, what deal would you do with the Labour Party and Jeremy Corbyn in order to perhaps put them into government? Well, firstly, if that is the scenario on Friday, a hung parliament with the SNP holding the balance of power, that's a really powerful, influential position for Scotland to be in. So in many ways, that's the best outcome, certainly much, much better than facing the prospect of five years of Boris Johnson as Prime Minister. Um, I've been pretty clear during this campaign of what I would be looking to advance in any discussions with a minority Labour government. I'd want real end to austerity and end to the welfare cuts that have been causing so much misery. And yes, I'd want a Labour government to respect the right of the Scottish people to decide our own future. I don't when, expect them just to support independence, you, okay. but I do... So, so this is a concern, okay. perhaps, for um, the other people in the UK who might not support uh, Scottish independence and want the UK to stay together. Um, what do you think would happen with that independence referendum. Mm. Because Labour have said that they won't give it to you until at least 2021. There's also the chance that Labour, when you talk about the end of austerity, Labour might pump mil billions into Scotland. And already support for independence we see from the latest polls is actually waning. So you might be in a position where Labour don't offer you a referendum for a while. They offer a second referendum on EU membership and perhaps remain win, in which case your reasons for having another Scottish referendum go. And Scotland gets billions. Doesn't that mean that your case for independence would well, collapse? <laughs> Um, no, I, I don't think it does. There's a lot of supposition and hypotheticals in that question, but fair enough, we're a few days away from an election. But one of the phrases you used there was uh, the Labour Party would give you something. This is the issue of principle at stake here. It's not for Westminster to give Scotland the chance to choose our own future. That is a, a right we should have. And yes, absolutely, it would then be up to people in Scotland to look at the arguments for and against independence and come to an informed decision. Uh, but the question here... The issue of principle, I guess, I'm putting forward is that it should be for people in Scotland to decide that question. It should not be for Westminster, whether that's a Labour government or a Tory government, to dictate our future and impose it upon us. But, of course, in this election, I mean, this election won't decide whether or not Scotland is independent. Uh, this election is Scotland's chance to help lock Boris Johnson out of Downing Street, to give us an escape route from Brexit, and to say quite clearly that whatever our future as a country is going to be, it should be people here that determine that. As okay. I said a moment ago, it shouldn't be for Westminster to decide. Good morning, Good Mr. Morning, How are you? How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I'm just, just inquiring after your well-being. It wasn't a trick question. I'm very, I'm, I'm very well. Sorry, I, I answered you. I said I'm very well. I'm glad that I'm here in person and not as a nice sculpture. Yes, yes exactly. <laughs> At least you have the balls to come on. Uh, and you're looking very festive there with your Christmas tree. So, so, so to just... speak. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, we never know these days. I had to ask the question. Um, so, uh, can you remind us, in the 2014 independence referendum, what was the result in terms of the percentage you voted uh, no and yes? We, I think we've had this... I think we've had this oh, discussion every time I've uh, come on to your Remind everybody... I, I, I'm, I'm going to... Remind uh, everybody. The independence didn't win. It no, was 45% was the, was the in favour of independence, 55%... Against, I've just told you, 45, okay. 55. But now since you came then, on, of course, you've come on. lots and lots of things I get have it. changed. I'm just asking for some stats. So it was 55% of Scots voted no, 45% voted yes. You've spent the last few weeks, and you've done this all year, and you've come on this show many times, and absolutely emphasised the support for independence is rising in Scotland. The people of Scotland know they've yep. made a terrible mistake and they want to redress that in another referendum and they want to leave. Which does prompt the question, how could it be, if that is the case, that you, Gov, last week, in the latest poll about this, says 56% of voters in Scotland want to stay in the UK well, versus 44%. In other words, the gap has absolutely, as you've rightly said, it's changed, I... <laughs> but it's changed against you. More well, Scots now want to stay I... than they did in the referendum five years ago. 
Can I, can I say, these ice sculptures are probably getting more of a word in this morning than I'm managing so far with you. But anyway, that's another, another story. Um, I'm going to quote Susanna from a moment ago when she said, quite rightly, of course, you can't trust the polls. But that's one poll. And, you know, yes, of course, all politicians will point to the polls that they like. But all of the polling evidence, with that one exception, has shown rising support for independence and an independence referendum. Interestingly, that poll doesn't use quite the same question that was asked in 20. 14 and in most polls since. But, you know, I'm happy to put my argument. I think there is rising support for independence in Scotland. I uh, hear it and feel it every day on the campaign trail. But fundamentally, of course, uh, this is about the right of the Scottish people to decide. If you're right, then that's up to the Scottish people. If I'm right, equally, it's up to them as well. That's the issue in this respect that's at the heart of this election. Wonder, it's for people uh, yeah. in Scotland to decide I our future, not for Westminster of, to dictate. I wonder whether part of the problem is... Your record in Scotland, there's huge concerns in the health service over waiting times. 250,000 people have waited longer than uh, the legally binding 12-week target for treatment since 2012. 90% of patients uh, should have treatment started within 18 weeks mm. of being referred. Only 76% have. That's down from 92% in 2012. 15,000 people waited more than uh, the six-week target uh, for tests. Scotland only ranked average, in meanwhile, in education amongst developed nations for maths and science. Do you think these are the things which are undermining confidence in independence? No, I, I, well, firstly, I don't believe confidence in independence has been undermined, but let me take well, those issues on. head you've, on because you, they you've are seen, very important But we've already seen issues. from the polls that actually more well, people we've seen want one to poll stay out of than many. leave. <laughs> OK. Well, OK, let's, let's accept that premise for the moment, although I will say again, we've seen one poll out of many, and I think you're probably slightly uh, overplaying that. But let me come to the important issues of health and education. Uh, take health, first of all. Uh, health services in every part of the UK, in fact, in every part of the Western world, are facing challenges from rising demand. But if you look at the performance in Scotland, where the SNP is in charge, as opposed to England, where the Tories are in charge, Wales, where Labour are in charge, our health services performing better. So accident and emergency services, for example, consistently over the past four years have performed much better than elsewhere. Audit Scotland that looks at the performance of our health service every year says that in the most recent year, more people treated within the targets than was the case the year before because we invest more. We are investing about £136 more per head in the health service than in the rest of the UK. We've got record uh, numbers of people working in our health service. We've already done some of the big reforms that haven't been done okay, elsewhere, so integrating we can, but health Nicholas and social Sturgeon, care. We've we got can... free personal care for the elderly, yeah, which yeah. Labour are promising in this election, free prescriptions already. So okay, we're getting we can... on with the job. And actually, that's probably why the SNP has remained so much further ahead so than our key opponents in this election. Let's choose another measure then. Scotland okay. uh, is the worst place in Europe for drug deaths. Scotland saw more drug-related deaths uh, than any other European mm -hmm. Union country in 2018. Well, let me... Let me address that head on. Mm. Let, look, I, I'm the First Minister. I, I face challenges. All uh, leaders of governments face challenges. The difference is we're getting on with addressing those challenges. Take drugs deaths. Some of the reasons for this go back a long way. In the 1980s, Scotland had a higher rate of drug use. Drug users are getting older, multiple health problems. So we have that real problem, that public health emergency in terms of drugs deaths. So what are we doing? We're investing more in drug treatment and rehabilitation services. We've established a task force that has lived experience of drug users informing that so that we look at different ways of dealing with the drugs problem. We're treating it as a public health issue, not primarily as a criminal justice issue, which is a very different issue, but what was done with knife crime, for example, which is why we see at levels of knife crime much okay, lower in Scotland than elsewhere. So I, I, don't, I don't deny challenges, but what I'm saying is we're bringing the innovation, the investment and the determination and focus to these challenges that we don't see in the rest of Brexit-obsessed uh, UK government. OK, why do you want to get into bed with Jeremy Corbyn? I, I don't, if I can be perfectly frank about that, and I think it might be uh, a bit early in the morning for that kind of terminology. I, I, don't, I, I don't actually relish the prospect of 
certainly don't relish the prospect of Boris Johnson as Prime Minister. I don't relish the prospect of Jeremy Corbyn either. One of the reasons I support independence is I don't want Scotland to continually have to choose the least worst option in this respect. You might be in a position on Friday morning. You might be in a position on Friday party, morning. Well, let me finish the point. Yeah, but my, Absolutely, my point is, which I'm coming on to. You might be in a position literally in three I'm days' time. I'm coming on to that. Uh, but first, Minister, you yeah. might be in a position in three days' time where you actively have to decide whether to get into bed, politically speaking, with Jeremy Corbyn. Yeah. And the question is, why would you feel comfortable about doing that? This is a guy who literally, a few days ago, made a public apology for the rampant anti-Semitism laced through his party. Yeah. Why would you feel comfortable aligning your well, party I, I to Jeremy Corbyn's Labour Party? What, what I'm trying to say to you, and I'm trying to be pretty frank about this, as I have all through the campaign, I don't feel particularly comfortable about this choice, um, but I know the damage Boris Johnson and a majority Tory government uh, would do to Scotland and to the UK. Rip us out of the European Union. Boris Johnson's views on race, is, uh, Islamic, uh, Islamophobia, for example, are hardly uh, very attractive. I don't uh, relish the prospect of Jeremy Corbyn as Prime Minister, but as you rightly say, if the SNP holds the balance of power, we have to make a choice. And what I would say, if the Labour Party get themselves into a position on Thursday of potentially being able to form a minority government. Better to have the progressive voices of the SNP as an influence on them, making sure not just the right policies but the right values are to the fore than to have them without that. Okay, so, you, said, you know, you I don't, said... as I say, relish this choice, but okay. you rightly see if we're in that position, then we have to make choices. Right, and you've clearly indicated, and this is the way the wind's blowing, that if it comes to it, you'll support Corbyn over Boris Johnson, so that may well be how government it plays out. However, you've also said it's a deal-breaker for you as a party, that uh, the, the Trident nuclear missile programme. Labour's position, mm. notwithstanding the fact Jeremy Corbyn says he'll never use it, is to renew that programme. Is it a deal-breaker if Labour decide that they will continue with the Trident missile programme? Is that the moment that you're not able to do a deal with him? Or would you just suck it up and say, all right, forget that, we'll do it? No, I've been pretty clear how fundamentally important the Trident issue is. Now, of course, we're dealing with nuclear weapons. You have to have a conversation about the timescale in which they can be safely removed from Scotland. But the, the first issue, of course, is to take a decision, and I would be uh, absolutely clear about this, is not to spend £200 billion on a new system of Trident nuclear weapons. So you weapons. won't take I mean, part I, in any coalition... Again, you know, I, I All right, but be... it's very important clarification. You well, I'm will not going not... to be in a coalition. I'm not, not going to be in a coalition. Not, I'm, I'm not, I'm right, not proposing you will not give a coalition. Your, okay, I'm, let me rephrase that. So you will give clear. your support to Jeremy Corbyn, which could be utterly invaluable to him. You will only give your support as a party if he renounces Labour's pledge to renew the Trident programme. Is that your position? We will, we will not support the renewal of Trident. And if you can give me a moment to explain why, I and others will disagree with me here. It's a a perfectly legitimate disagreement, but I think Trident is a moral issue. I don't think we should have weapons that can wipe out the whole swathes of civilization. We don't allow chemical weapons anymore. Why should we have nuclear weapons? But also, in an age where we have to repair the damage done by austerity, I think spending £200 billion on these weapons of mass destruction, right. particularly, as you say, if you have a Prime Minister who's saying he'll never use them, is the wrong priority in so terms what of undertaking choice would of you, investment. What I'd rather undertaking... see that money going into health and Right, so education. come Friday, if Jeremy you know, if we have a hung parliament mm. come Friday, will that be the deal breaker mm. for you? If Jeremy Corbyn continues I've, I've... to lead a party that supports the renewal of Trident, mm. will you say, unless you publicly say you're not renewing it, I'm out? I've been pretty clear about this. We would not support the renewal of Trident and we won't support a government that is seeking to renew Trident. So Jeremy Corbyn would not have your cost, support let me come unless back he to renounces the, point... the Trident programme. It's a very important moment. Even and if I know it means know, a second referendum. I, I, I know you think you're... I know you think you're getting some kind of exclusive here, but I've said this many times before on the, the campaign trail. The point I was going to add, though, is that, you know, we're talking understandably about what happens on Friday. We're only in this space if on Thursday people stop Boris Johnson getting a majority. And in every single one of the Tory seats in Scotland, the SNP is the main challenger. So if people don't want to wake up on Friday morning to five years of a Boris Johnson majority government, they've got to vote SNP on Thursday to help stop that happen. And that is all of these other discussions 
discussions are important. I've been very clear and frank throughout the course of this campaign, more so than anybody else has been, I think. But it's important we don't get ahead of ourselves here because we only get the opportunity to have this kind of influence if people deprive Boris Johnson okay. of that majority. A couple of quick uh, questions to leave you with. Point. A couple of quick questions to leave you with. One, okay. was put, one was put to Jeremy Corbyn. Will you be watching the Queen's speech on Christmas Day? And if so, what time? <laughs> Um, well, the Queen's speech is on at three o'clock. I, I, I know that. I don't always... In fact, I very rarely have the television on over Christmas Day, so I usually catch up with what the Queen's been saying when I see it on the news later on because uh, our family tends to arrive around that time. And I was going to say there I'm in the kitchen preparing the dinner, but that wouldn't be strictly true. <laughs> I'm usually shouting at my husband who's in the kitchen preparing the dinner. <laughs> Poor guy. Does he really get it in the neck on Christmas Day? Or? No, 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 no. Of course not. <laughs> You just painted a picture of screaming at him on Christmas Day. I had to ask the question. <laughs> no, but you, you, you know me better than that. I, I would Gently never encouraging. Uh, Gently finally, encouraging. Finally, Boris Johnson really struggled yesterday to come up with the naughtiest thing he's ever done and eventually came up with the highly implausible... Wait, wait, no, hold on. I, I told you this the last time. No, I didn't like your answer last I time. I told you this the last time. Yeah. If I was going to... Well, yeah. I, it's going to be the same one. If I was ever going to, to say live on television mm. what the naughtiest thing I've ever done was, mm. I would not say it to you, Pear, on no. this but programme. But it doesn't because, matter where you, you know, say it, does it? It's, it's a public pronouncement wherever you say it. It doesn't matter if it's to me. Uh, so, again, because he's finally... <laughs> but by answered... definition, if a politician... He's finally answered the question. If a politician has done he... something so yeah. naughty... Yeah. <laughs> Go on, finish that sentence. What? What's the, the question? If a politician's done something so What's naughty... What's the question? Well, how does that sentence end? If a politician's well, you, you, done something really by, naughty... By definition, you're not going to sit on live television and admit to it, are you? Okay. Well, that, that immediately creates the impression with me that you've done something so <laughs> terrible you can't admit it on national television. My mind is boggling. That, well, I haven't. I can assure you. I can assure you that that is not the case. Have you done something naughtier than pounding, than pounding your bicycle respect. onto the pavement? Or running through yes, wheat fields? Yes, and, and can I say, so has Boris... So has Boris Johnson done <laughs> something much more yeah, than the that. Problem. That's the problem. <laughs> Nicola Sturgeon, at the we we you've already mentioned, of course, our leaders made of ice. At the weekend in Aberdeen, yes. you were on ice and the photograph showed that some poor lad next to you um, took a tumble. There was no physical contact. The wee boy actually was the, the wee boy of uh, one of my colleagues. And although the, it looks on that film as if I sort of take him out as I'm <laughs> going past him there, that did not happen. There was no contact whatsoever. Oh. Uh, but I was very proud of the fact I managed to stay upright. I used to do ice skating when I was younger at Frosty's Ice Disco in the Magnum <laughs> Leisure Centre in Irvine, it's, it's which been... is possibly where the naughtiest things I've ever done actually happened. Oh. <laughs> I, I tell you what, I'm sending a team down to Frosty's Ice Disco. It's been game. demolished. That's where it's, the... It's been, it's been, it doesn't exist anymore. It doesn't anymore matter. It doesn't matter. There will be people in that area of Frosty's Ice Disco <laughs> who know where your bodies are buried. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, probably, yes. You've had to demolish probably. the place to get rid of any of the evidence. Uh, Nicholas Sturgeon, <laughs> we appreciate you giving us your time. As always, you're one of the few leaders who actually comes on. And we appreciate that very much. And it's going to be a very interesting week. So thank you for joining us.